Welcome to the world of the 1979 movie Cuba. Brace yourself for a mix of emotions because this film is filled with funny, surprising, and sad moments that will keep you hooked. Set against the backdrop of a revolution, the story follows a British mercenary who gets caught up in the chaos of Cuba in the late 1950s. In the midst of political turmoil, he deals with danger, betrayal, and unexpected alliances. While watching, you might ask yourself, can one person really make a difference in such a chaotic situation? And what sacrifices are worth it for the greater good? Now tell me which character in the movie is your favorite. Stay tuned for more interesting insights and share your memories or experiences with this film in the comments below. We want to hear from you. Keep watching for more facts about this gripping story. An average film, not as bad as some reviews suggest, yet far from greatness. The main attractions are Sean Connery's presence and the depiction of Cuba, showcasing notable landmarks and historical context. However, the narrative and supporting performances fail to leave a lasting impression. The storyline revolves around a love interest pulling the main character deeper into the Cuban crime and vigilante world, marked by the destruction of bottle factories and tragic deaths. Comparable stories in more recent movies have executed similar plots with greater success, lacking the distinctive charm of the Cuban setting. The movie presents itself as a surprisingly enjoyable mess. The plot follows a British mercenary hired by the Cuban government to quell Fidel Castro's insurgency, only to rediscover an old love amidst the chaos. Despite its initially promising concept depicting a counterinsurgency expert aiding Batista's regime, the focus swiftly shifts to a rekindled romance, losing momentum. The pre-revolutionary Cuban backdrop is meticulously recreated, portraying its glamour, blitz, vice, poverty, and intrigue. Unfortunately, the script lacks conviction and takes its time to develop, hindering the overall flow. While some standout scenes and the evocative atmosphere are commendable, they can't compensate for the lack of narrative progression, partly influenced by the tragic nature of events the main character unable to quell the rebellion or win the love interest. It merits a single viewing for the portrayal of pre-revolutionary Cuba. In the movie Cuba, tension arose between Sir Sean Connery and director Richard Lester during filming. Their collaboration on Robin and Marion preceded this, marking a history of working together. Despite differences that surfaced, he and Lester later reunited for Time Bandits, showcasing a resilience in their professional relationship. The behind-the-scenes dynamics between him and Lester added layers to the production, influencing the creative process and the final outcome of the film. Such clashes and eventual reconciliations are not uncommon in the film industry, where artistic visions sometimes collide. The complexities of their working relationship provided insights into the intricacies of filmmaking and human dynamics in creative endeavors. Thus, the story behind Cuba extends beyond its narrative, encompassing the interactions and collaborations that shaped it into what it became. The movie faced bans in some South American countries for its pro-Castro stance. Steven Soderbergh, known for directing Chi Part 1 and Chi Part 2, described it as flawed yet fascinating, praising its refusal to romanticize war and its complex characters, notably Brooke Adams' role. Sean Connery, who starred in the film, collaborated multiple times with Denholm Elliott, sharing the screen in Robin and Marion, A Bridge Too Far, and Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. In the late 1970s, a film was crafted, and it beckoned Diana Ross for the role of Alexandra. However, she declined the offer, paving the way for another to step into the character's shoes. As time rolled on, the movie found its way to television screens in Belgium during the mid-1980s. Yet, it wasn't met with universal acclaim. The Cuban Embassy in Belgrade, where the film had premiered in 1980, raised an official objection. They contended that the movie was an affront to the Cuban Revolution and its people. The protest led to a swift decision, the removal of the film from the screening schedule. In its place, the audience was presented with Caesar and Cleopatra from 1945. Interestingly, the diplomatic ripple effect didn't stop there. The Egyptian embassy joined the dissent, asserting that the film portrayed the Egyptian people as submissive to foreign invaders. Fast forward to the 90s, and discussions arose about the similarity between the storyline of this film and another titled Havana released in 1990. Observers noted the parallels, sparking conversations about the shared themes between the two cinematic works. In the world of cinema, the path of this movie was marked not only by its narrative twist, but also by the diplomatic uproar it incited in Belgium. A tale of casting choices, diplomatic interventions, and thematic echoes with another film, these are the strands woven into the fabric of this cinematic piece. 
The 1979 film, shot in Spain, stands as a notable production featuring Sir Sean Connery, renowned as the original James Bond. Due to restrictions, the movie couldn't be filmed in Cuba, leading to Spain serving as its substitute location. Interestingly, Die Another Day, another Bond film in which Connery was not involved, also utilized Spain to portray Cuban settings. Walter Godel, recognized for his portrayal of General Gogol in five James Bond films, including From Russia with Love, played Don Jose Pulido in this movie. Despite both actors appearing in the same Bond film, they never shared the screen in a Bond production where Godel assumed the role of Gogol. One distinctive aspect of some versions of the film is the removal of 24 seconds depicting real cockfighting footage. This alteration reflects the sensitivity surrounding the portrayal of certain activities. In summary, the 1979 film shot in Spain features Sir Sean Connery in the lead role, with Walter Godel making a notable appearance. The film's need to substitute Cuba with Spain is a noteworthy aspect, emphasizing the limitations imposed during its production. In the 1979 movie, Tony Matthews portrayed a Castro-like revolutionary leader with his voice dubbed by another British actor, Joss Ackland. The main poster of the film featured painted artwork, showing Sir Sean Connery holding a black pistol with his arm around a woman. This poster also included several girls in bikinis and various action and adventure scenes reminiscent of Connery's involvement in the James Bond movie franchise. Interestingly, United Artists, the studio behind the Bond movies, also produced this film. Fidel Castro's name is mentioned in Dragon's April Sun in Cuba. In the 1979 movie Cuba, the character portraying Fidel Castro plays a central role. The film also nods to characters from the Maltese Falcon, with Gutman and Miss Wonderly being notable examples, along with the clever use of Dapes, an anagram for Spade, the lead character in the classic film. The decision to film in Spain instead of Cuba was explained by executive producer Denis O'Dell. He noted that certain Spanish cities like Jerez de la Frontera, Cadiz, and Seville retained much of the architectural essence that characterized Cuba, making them suitable substitutes for filming locations. The movie captures the political and social turmoil of the era, showcasing the complexities and challenges faced by individuals amidst revolution and upheaval. Through its narrative, it offers insights into the struggles and aspirations of its characters against the backdrop of historical events. Set against the backdrop of a changing nation, the film explores themes of revolution, betrayal, and personal redemption, offering viewers a glimpse into a tumultuous period in history. Its portrayal of characters navigating through uncertain times resonates with audiences, shedding light on the human experience in the face of adversity. The movie's use of Spain as a setting underscores the interconnectedness of cultures and histories, highlighting the influence of colonial legacies and the fluidity of identity in a rapidly changing world. In summary, the 1979 movie Cuba presents a compelling narrative that intertwines personal drama with larger political and historical contexts, offering a thought-provoking exploration of identity, revolution, and resilience. In the movie directed by Richard Lester, set in 1959 during the Cuban Revolution, the story revolves around the downfall of the Batista regime. It takes inspiration from Casablanca, especially in its ending, but focuses on telling a political story without directly discussing politics. Instead, it emphasizes the unspoken aspects of love. Focusing on the main character, born to Angel Maria Bautis de Castro y Argis and Lena Ruz Gonzalez, it sheds light on his family background and upbringing. He came from a large family with half-siblings from his parents' previous marriages, which influenced his later revolutionary actions. The narrative weaves together political turmoil and personal tales, reflecting the complexity of the time. As the revolution progresses, characters deal with love, sorrow, and allegiance, enriching the historical context. Interestingly, Cuba wasn't the only film inspired by Casablanca at that time. Other movies like Cabo Blanco and Far East also reinterpreted the classic, showing how influential Casablanca remained in cinema. In essence, the movie captures a turbulent period in Cuban history, blending politics and romance against the backdrop of revolution and regime change. In the late 1970s, a film titled Cuba directed by Richard Lester emerged, inspired by Lester's reflections on great modern leaders. According to Neil Sinyard in the films of Richard Lester, the movie's origin traces back to Lester's ideas, combining thoughts on Fidel Castro and the classic Casablanca. During that era, Fidel Castro held power in Cuba, and in the event of his demise, his brother Raul Castro was next in line. This political backdrop set the stage for the events in the film. 
Notable actors Sir Sean Connery and Denholm Elliott, who had previously shared the screen in Robin and Marion and later collaborated in Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, played key roles in the movie. Their presence added familiarity to the film, bringing together a cast with established chemistry. Crafted from Lester's distinctive perspective, the film weaved a narrative that dared to blend the complexities of modern leadership, exemplified by Fidel Castro, with the cinematic allure reminiscent of Casablanca. This audacious combination laid the foundation for the unique storytelling in Cuba. In conclusion, the movie stands as a cinematic exploration fueled by Lester's unconventional inspiration, intertwining political realities with the essence of classic cinema. Featuring talents like Sean Connery and Deno Elliott, it unfolds against the backdrop of Fidel Castro's Cuba, adding authenticity to its narrative. Director Richard Lester once mentioned that the movie provides a glimpse into a unique time and place. It portrays the transition from one regime to another during a significant revolution. Historical events of the Cuban Revolution depicted in this film were also shown in other Hollywood movies like Havana and The Godfather Part Roman II. The opening title card sets the scene in Havana in 1959. Cuba offers insight into a pivotal moment in history, capturing the essence of a nation in flux. Set in Havana as the Battister regime nears its end, the movie stars Sir Sean Connery and Martin Balsam, who acted together in two other films before. It was filmed with two different endings, one happy and the other sad to reflect the uncertain times. The story follows various characters and their lives amidst the political chaos. Both endings show the challenges faced by the people of Havana during this important time. Directed by director's name, the movie explores human strength and the search for hope during tough times. It was in a movie from 1979, Sean Connery and Brooke Adams starred together, known for their roles in The Great Train Robbery. They went on a journey in a white Cadillac convertible from 1957. Denholm Elliott, who acted with Connery in several films, joined them. Elliott had notable roles in Robin and Marion, A Bridge Too Far, and Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade alongside Connery. Their collaboration extended to Cuba as well, adding depth to the cast. The movie offers a thrilling narrative set against political turmoil. With its stellar cast and captivating story, Cuba remains memorable, showcasing the actor's talents. In 1979, a film delved into the life of Fidel Castro and his longtime companion, Celia Sanchez. Castro, a prominent figure in Cuban history, shared nearly three decades of his life with Sanchez, a devoted guerrilla leader. Their relationship was notable for its depth. Sanchez was not only Castro's partner, but also someone unafraid to challenge his ideas. Her passing in 1980, succumbing to cancer, deeply impacted him. The film captures this significant aspect of Castro's personal life, shedding light on the side of the revolutionary leader not often seen in historical narratives. Through their bond, viewers gain insight into Castro's character and the complexities of his personal relationships.